Hello crafty friends, Nina here. Thanks for joining me today to create together a two-page layout art journal using Stamperia's Vintage Library collection. Let's just begin. I'm going to be using Stamperia's art journal. I'm going to link it down below if you want to check it. I'm gonna use my Distress inks to create my background. Here I'm just showing you the collection of my brushes that I have. I usually have these brushes, one for each uh, Distress ink shade. And I just use my label maker and I label on the handle of the brush the name of the Distress ink. I'm going to be using Antique Linen, Vintage Photo, and Broken China. And I keep, I'm gonna keep going between the three uh, shades until I'm totally happy with how the background looks. I'm gonna start with antique linen and then go to the blue broken china and then back to vintage photo and I'm gonna keep going back and forth until the background is exactly how I want it to look like. Look over here, it looks a little bit messy, but once, this is just the very beginning layer, the very bottom layer, once we add more layers on top of it, it's gonna all come out together. I'm using here again one of the masks from the stencil from uh, Samperia. It creates sort of whimsical blocks. And I'm going to use the exact same inks that I used for the background. Where it has antique linen, I'm gonna add antique linen stenciling. And then when it's blue, I'm gonna use the uh, blue over each area. And this is how it's gonna look like at the end. One of the beautiful stencils by Stamperia is this one that creates sort of a frame all around your uh, page. And I'm going to use it. You simply just bring it very close to the edge and then you start inking the edges. And once you remove the stencil, you're gonna have this beautiful frame all around your project. I'm going to show you how I do it on this um, edge and then we're gonna go fast forward so it doesn't take so long um, from the video. Remember to rotate your stencil so it doesn't all look like a, a repetition. So I will keep rotating my page until I'm all done with the four sides. Look how beautiful this frame is so so cute it really popped my background and makes it look so professional and elegant so to finish off my background i'm gonna end with this beautiful stamp set also from stamperia i'm gonna have everything linked down below the materials and the tools that i'm going to use so don't forget to check them out in the description below this stamp set creates this beautiful texture all over your project. They're different and create beautiful vintage sort of cracks over here, rings from the coffee mug, a little bit of stamps, a little bit of like, uh, I think sort of a compass looking like. It's so beautiful. I am going to add a lot of these splashes and coffee rings to finish off my background. This collection is so beautiful. I love creating anything library and I love creating anything vintage. And the combination between both these to create this beautiful collection is just really amazing. Over here for, <laughs> I promise, a final touch of, for, of the background. I'm going to smoosh my ink pads, the antique linen and the vintage photo, spray them with water, and then use my brush to just flick here and there over the background. I also felt that the frame was too vivid, so I decided to break the edge a little bit, so more, more sort of creating a transition between the frame and the background itself. So I'm adding these little touches with the antique linen, Look how it gives as if it's an, another layer of the frame, but it breaks the sharp uh, transition between the frame and the rest of the background. Now we're done with the background. We want to find a focal point from the collection. 
I brought this collectible book to choose what I can use from the collection to add as a focal point. When I was creating the background, I had no idea what I'm going to have on top of it. But I will check all my ephemeras, all the pieces and pages from the collectible book so I can choose something that I really like and feel that matches the colors. All the pieces are going to match with the background, I felt, because of the colors that are the vintage photo and the broken china are really so much matching with the colors from the book. So finally, I decided to use the this window from the ephemera and I'm going to use this scene of the books sort of creating buildings but i did not want to have the sky so i decided that i'm gonna cut the sky away and just keep the books that look like buildings they are so pretty look how beautiful it looks like the buildings they have doors they have windows they even have this dome on top of one of the buildings and the colors are so perfect and matching so much with my background. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to go fast forward just to show you what I'm going to do. I'm cutting totally at the edge of each building and I'm going to go all around the top of the buildings to cut it and separate the sky from it. I'm going to keep also the sky the scrap of the sky part that I'm, I might use for later projects but for this one I'm just gonna keep the buildings when I looked at the buildings next to each other I felt I didn't I didn't want them to I wanted them to end from both the sides as the middle part large tall buildings and then they become shorter on the sides so if you see on the right side they're getting shorter but on the left sides they're taller than the middle building. I want the middle building that has the dome in the middle to be the center. And then on each side, I want the buildings to go shorter. But I don't want it to be shorter bluntly. And I'm going to have some of the buildings tall and some of the buildings short until the last one will definitely look really shorter. See, I feel that it looks nicer this way. It matches with my project. I might use it differently in different projects, but for this one, I really wanted it to gradually become shorter buildings. Then the part that I did cut from the top, I'm going to use again to complete the two page layout. And I'm going to glue it to the rest so it will continue being gradually shorter. Here I'm trying to figure out how to position it. I At the beginning, I was going to add it to the corner of the page. To the right bottom corner of the page but then later i'm gonna change my mind and i'm gonna add other elements on the right and i'm gonna keep the middle building that has the dome on top the uh, the yellow building in the middle this building i'm gonna keep it in the middle of the uh, two page layout i need more ground if you see the pebble ground uh, bottom i need more of it so i was finding it in different pages of the 8x8 booklet and I did find some again I'm cutting it to match the same height of the ground that I have under my buildings so I can add it to the little buildings that I added on the left so everything matches together and looks seamless as one big top page layout I'm taking my time here to check how I want to place everything before I glue it. Once I glue it, it's permanent. So I want to make sure that this is how I want it to look like. See here, you're going to see that the ground became seamless. It's just a continuation of my uh, scene. I'm taking my time here to remove some of the pieces. Don't be scared that you're going to cut your uh, design if you don't like after you cut it, you can just return it where it was. Nobody's gonna know. So, and I then I finally found that this is how I like it, but then decided that I want to shift it a little bit to the left. So the middle building with the dome is gonna be in the center of my two pages layout. And then I brought the ephemera piece that I chose to go with these buildings, which is this beautiful dome shaped window that matches perfectly with my background. It's just so pretty. The bricks that I created with the stencil match so much with the bricks framing this beautiful window. Before I glue my buildings, 
I would always come with the vintage photo and my blender and blend all around the edges of the uh, my ephemera piece or my focal point. Look at the difference between the parts that is ink blended at the edge and the part that is not. Look how much dimension and depth the ink blending gives at the edges. I'm going to do the same thing all around my buildings and to bring everything together I also want to ink blend the window look at the difference between the side that was ink blend and the side that was not it gives so much depth and dimension so I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of the window so everything is matchy matchy and then I'm gonna start gluing everything to the background now that I decided to add these buildings in the middle at the center of the page, then I will be needing to add the ground on both sides. So the strip that I did cut for the ground, I am going to cut it in half and put one on each side. So my scene is the, the ground is sort of seamless and continues on both sides. Then I'm going to start gluing the pieces starting with the window over here i'm using my novo deluxe glue it is permanent it's really perfect but i just want it gives you a little bit of room to wiggle your focal point and make sure that it is where you want it to be and then it just dries and uh, glues the your uh, element permanently then I noticed that I don't want the red building to finish or to begin actually the height of it with, with the bottom of the window. So I decided to add a little bit of height for the red building so it does not end at the same edge of the window. I'm then using my bone folder to create a crease over the center building which is going to be in the center of my two pages. So when I close the book, it uh, folds easily. It folds easily, and it will make it easier also to glue it to the page. I'm folding it and going over it with my bone folder, so I make sure that it is properly folded how I want it to be, so it doesn't fold irregularly, not the way I wanted it to be. I'm generously adding the liquid glue so I can attach one side of my buildings of my focal point because I didn't want to add the left side yet since I still want to figure out how to add them to glue the top of the red building over here I made sure everything is glued and nice on this side and then I'm going to add the ground on the right corner behind the focal point and make sure that it is placed properly in the corner and the pebbles or the bricks are matching with the rest of the ground from my focal point adding a little bit more glue to make sure that I did attach it properly on this side coming to the other side now I want to see how I'm going to add this red part of the top of the building so it makes it taller this is the part that i told you i don't want the red building to finish at the same edge of the window so i want it to be a little bit taller the best idea that i came up with is to place it where i want it to be and then fold unfold the focal point the buildings on top of it so they properly match where i want them exactly to be making sure that it is where I want it to be. So it's way more beautiful when it's taller over here. It reaches a little bit of half of the window. And then I am going to glue it, just making sure that it's properly, the edge is properly cut. And then I'm going to glue the whole thing to the other side of the page. Again, adding my Nuvo Deluxe Glue. Take care when you're adding, don't add extra too much. You want to add enough 
so it does not warp your image or tear your paper again I'm using the strap of the ground to add it to the left corner so it can continue my scene from this side to this side all the way from the left to the right and then I'm going to figure what I'm going to add on the empty areas on the left and the right of these buildings because the buildings do not continue till the edge till the edge of the left and the sides sides of the pages so I will definitely need to add something here and there to complete my scene. Making sure over here that I did glue the center properly using my bone folder, pressing the building in the middle and making sure that I fold the book and close it. When I finished, I figured that I did not yet uh, ink blend the bottom of the page we did ink it before with the frame but once we placed these this the focal point it then did hide the ink blended edge so we're gonna redo it again over here i got this beautiful ink bottle one of the ephemera pieces and i decided to add it um, to the left side of the page with this beautiful feather coming out like the vintage old days how they used to write with the feather and the ink bottle i there were a red one and blue one also a red uh, feather and a blue red but i thought this combination will look really nice i wanted it to lie flat on top of my ink bottle and on top of my window so i had to remove some of the layers from the back because it's really thick cardboard so I had to remove a little bit of the layers where it lies on the it lays on the window and on the bottle so it lays down flat using my Nouveau Deluxe glue again I am attaching it to the page I am going to uh, have a sentiment about your life story something about our life story so I thought adding something to write with like the ink bottle and the feather will look so beautiful and will complete the idea what I'm going for on the right side I decided to add this stack of books but then I didn't want them to be on the ground a little too low and I didn't want them to be floating in the air so I decided to bring this sort of um, the vintage egg holder and I did cut the egg away and I made it look like as if it's a table with the books on top of it. Everything is just matching together. It's a beautiful collection and whatever you add to whatever is going to just look amazing. Also, I am again to bring everything together. I am ink blending this little table and the books and the ink bottle and the feather as well. So everything is matching with my background and the window. They all have the vintage uh, photo ink blended all around their edges I'm using again my glue over here to glue the egg holder or sort of a table and then my stack of books on top of it and the top beautiful open book is just amazing so here it, how it looks so look at the dimension everything is just beautiful I love it so now it's the time to add my sentiment and I decided to write the sentiment with these beautiful alphabet dies from scrapbook.com also linked down below it comes in uh, two with in two sets one for the small letter and one for the capital letters and then I decided to use the capital S to write the word story and then the smaller letters uppercase and lowercase letters I combined both of them the uppercase s and the lowercase for the rest of the word story and then I'm using my uh, sidekick machine to to you to cut this um, these letters to create the word story from this light vanilla color paper I did not want them to look this vanilla color, the words, 
so it is more matching with the vintage look that I'm going for. Look how beautiful the letters are. And I was so lucky to have the Y, the last letter of the, of the word story, that also looks like these sort of rounded looks, rounded and it looks just perfect, matches with the S. I did print this, these two, and I cut them to strips. It was, you are the hero of your and then cut them and now i'm trying to figure out where i'm gonna place each piece of them but first of all i don't want this to get lost in my background so i have to frame it again with the vintage photo so it pops against the background and also so it matches with the rest of the focal elements because they're all ink blended I ink blended the edges with the vintage photo. I'm gonna do the same thing for all the strips. And then I don't want also the word story to be lost in the background. So again, I'm using the vintage photo distress ink with the ink, uh, with the um, finger dabber, which is smaller blend blender. You can control it better when you're ink blending smaller areas. So here is the word story and the whole sentiment will read you are the hero of your story just perfect for this two page layout it's your story and you're writing it and you're the hero in it and you have all these vintage books the uh, ink bottle the feather and the uh, all these books it's and the sky and you have this beautiful window everything is just matching and beautiful together to make sure that i want everything to glue everything i want to glue everything where i want it to be i always place all my little um, letters before i commit and glue it and this is it after i glued everything look how beautiful it is look how beautiful the matching letters and um, beautiful sentiment then i just noticed that behind the word story the background is a little too pale and it needs a little bit more splashes to bring both the sides together and i did add some of the splashes using the vintage photo and some of the stamps and look how beautiful everything is the letter, the sentiment itself, the building, your focal point, the background, the framing, the colors, everything is just so amazing. I had so much fun creating this project with you guys today. I hope you did too and you got inspired. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps my channel so much. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!